and we are live. How is it going? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. It is a beautiful, sunny, hot day here in Florida. I'm going to let some people jump in. Um, doing this for two reasons. One reason is, you know, if you follow my information, if you are on my newsletter, you know, I'm always putting out content twice a week. Um, one's on Tuesday, the other one's on Thursday, but I've been wanting to sprinkle in a bunch of new stuff um, throughout the week. And I want to kind of do a lot of live stuff, right? Get people to come in here, ask some questions if they're on here on live, or just kind of have something to watch later that has a little bit more content on it. It's a little bit different than what you normally would see on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So what I wanted to kind of talk about today is navigating exercise with low back pain, right? And there's a lot of ways you can approach this. There's a lot of ways you can unpack this. And and back pain is a very multi-aspect thing. So um, it's almost impossible to cover everything in one kind of one go. But I want to kind of give you some practical things. And if you're on my newsletter on Thursday, yesterday, I sent out an email talking about like entry points, talking about when to quit, when to give up, when to stop doing what you're doing. Um, And if make sure, just to make sure that you guys can hear me, if you can hear me, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section and we can kind of go make sure my my audio is is working okay. So I want to kind of talk about that. I want to talk about navigating exercise with low back pain and kind of see where you guys are at, what you guys may be having an issue with and some common misconceptions when it comes to exercise and back pain. And I'll kind of just jump into the first point I wanted to make is you kind of have to reframe what exercise is to you, right? If you come from a CrossFit background, if you come from a a HIT training background or a bodybuilding background or a full body training or upper lower split or whatever your background may be, and in your mind, that's what exercise is to you. So when you're given an exercise program to follow with or for chronic back pain, it might look different, right? Or you'll approach that workout or that training program with that mindset or that conditioned thought process of what exercise or what your level of exercise should look like. And I think that's where a lot of people get frustrated. They get you know scared once they kind of jump in and they're like, oh man, well this program, I'm experiencing pain still. Like this workout program is for back pain and but I'm still experiencing back pain. So one of the things I try to get students to do and clients I'm working with is to kind of reframe what you view as exercise because at your point in time right now to help you um, get better and to move towards becoming more pain free, you have to think about how you're applying exercise to your specific situation and that exercise might look different than what you're used to. So it's this idea of we've got to reframe it and rethink about, okay, just because I'm not doing a full-blown CrossFit routine, just because I'm not doing a full-blown bodybuilding split or I'm not exercising five days a week like I used to, it doesn't mean that A, you're not in shape, B, you're going to lose all the, the gains and all the strength and the endurance that you used to have. It doesn't mean that you're going to lose all that. Right. And it doesn't mean that, oh, well, I guess I have lost it already because I can't do as much as I used to. So you get frustrated. A lot of people just end up quitting. Right. So reframing our thoughts, our opinions, our just fears around, well, I'm not doing what I used to do. um, Therefore, I'm going to lose it or it's not going to work because you might have to chip away and break down what you're doing now to get to the point where you can begin to build on that workout program and get harder and harder and harder, more intense, um, and for you to be able to follow it back to where you used to be. Because it is possible. It just takes time, okay? Um, And another point is when you're actually in your program, Right. And it's it's okay t- for things to not go as planned. And this kind of goes into the email that I sent out on Thursday to my newsletter. If and I keep referring to my newsletter, if you're not on that, every week I send out multiple emails that have strategies, videos, tips um, on exercise, building strength, building confidence, overcoming fear, all around exercise and back pain. Um, 
if you're not on that in the comment section below or to the right, I'm not sure where you're seeing it, there's a link. That is my exercise workshop where I break down what the work, what your workout should look like. Um, just so you can kind of take that and say, okay, this is what my workout looks like. And I have back pain. I'm going to take what his looks like and how he structures his workout and compare them. And I promise you, you're going to see some things in there that don't line up. And I would encourage you to take what I've done. I've suffered from eight plus years of chronic back pain, ruptured my disc, have or yeah, I was diagnosed with degenerative discs above that site and I did not get them medically fixed. And I've used exercise to overcome the chronic pain. And now I sit here today without chronic pain and I break down how I use and how I structure my workouts in that link. So check that out. It's completely free. It's another workshop that you have forever um, that you can watch and rewatch as much and as often as you want. Um, so going back to my thought on this, like it, it's okay for your workout to not go as planned, right? The email on Thursday went out and it talked about knowing when to quit, right? Hitting a certain point in your program where it's not going as planned and you're like, oh, well, something's going wrong. I'm having symptoms. I have back pain. My pain's getting worse or it might be getting better. Or it's not changing. And you kind of go into your workout thinking, okay, if I just follow the routine, then everything should be okay. I should be able to break into this and have no issues and it, you know everything should just work out the way it's planned to or it's kind of written out. And when it comes to chronic low back pain, when it comes to using exercise to overcome this, you have to give up on your plan, right? Because ultimately your body's going to change and your pain symptoms are going to change on a daily basis. And this is super, super frustrating, but it is very, very real and very much a part of the process of getting out of pain, right? So understanding that it will happen. You go into your workout and you'll start warming up and your workout will not go as planned. It'll start going south. It won't be working out the way you thought it would. And that can be very, very frustrating, especially if you've been seeing progress, if you've been making progress and getting better, right? And then you're like, you go in and you're like, man, this week, it's been a good week. You know, and Friday hits and you're like, today's Friday. I'm gonna do a full body workout. Or I'm gonna do my legs or upper body or whatever I'm gonna do. And you get in and you start doing it. And then stuff starts falling apart. You start experiencing symptoms that you had two months ago. You start having weird sciatic issues. Like you have all these things that start coming up and you're like, holy crap, like I've made all this progress and I've just lost it. And one day I've lost it all. And that is the, the nastiness of low back pain. That's the nat of persistent chronic low back pain, right? If you're trying to navigate the chronicness of back pain and use exercise to beat it, that's going to happen. That's inevitable. It's what you do on those days when you are experiencing bad days, when you have symptoms, when you're experiencing pain. Um, it's, it's what you do after that. Um, I know I got some questions coming in here. Um, and I'm going to try to get them. So if you do have a question, if I'm saying something, you're like, oh, that's a good point. And you ask a question, I'm going to try to get to it later. Um, so post a comment in there. Let me know uh, if, if what I'm just saying is just resonating with you. If this is something that you want to hear more about, if you want me to break down a specific topic, leave a comment below or to the side, wherever it's at. I don't even know where it's at. I know for me, it's on the side. Um, leave a comment and we can chat about it later. I can make more content later and stuff like that. Um, so let's talk about now you're in a workout, you're exercising, and you're just starting out. You're just warming up, right? You're just getting ready to start exercising, and something goes wrong, right? You're trying to do an exercise, whether it be a squat, whether it be a bench press, whatever you're doing, a deadlift, whatever you're doing, whatever you think you should be doing, and you're, you're plugging in this exercise, and now you're experiencing pain during this specific exercise. And... When it comes to chronic persistent low back pain and applying exercise to build resilience in your body and build strength and confidence, both mentally and confidence in your actual body, you have to find an entry point into that exercise, right? So let's talk about squatting. For a very long time, flexion and those squatting deadlifting positions for me caused stiffness tension that would last weeks. Stiffness and tension would, would result in sciatica, would... would have all these issues later down the road from that day on for about two, three, sometimes even uh, a whole month of symptoms over a stupid workout, right? So 
what I was doing wrong and what a lot of people do wrong is they're not finding the correct entry point into the workout or entry point into that exercise. Going back to the body weight squat, a body weight squat is a very simple exercise. It's not dangerous. It's not going to hurt you. Um, but if depending on where your mindset's at, how fearful are you of your movement, how afraid you are of hurting yourself or what kind of surgery you've had in the past, depending on all this stuff will determine how your body and mind respond to certain exercises. So if I have a someone doing a body weight squat and within 15 reps of a body weight squat with decent form, they stand up from doing 15 reps and they're like, oh, my, I'm starting to get some weird sensations down the back of my legs or my back's already getting kind of tight when they stand up. They're like oh, it's already kind of getting, I feel like I'm in like overextended positions. Um, that to me in my mind tells me one of two things a like it's just not a good position or not a good exercise to start with or b there's a lot of fear and anxiety and worry wrapped around that specific position right and this is something that i cover heavily in um my course relief academy and i, I don't have it here but I'll, I'll link it up in the comment section if you guys want to check that out and the whole point of relief academy is it really talks about entry points right it teaches entry points um to hang on a second just so you guys can check it out if you want um there you go it it teaches entry points into exercise because if you can't do a squat, then we have to change it. We have to find that entry point, that that threshold of pain and movement and exercise that will keep you inside the gym and moving, building resilience in your body so that you can become stronger and more confident to overcome persistent back pain and the fear around back pain. So we find something different. And an example of that is if you can't do a body weight squat, then we basically go to like a lunge, right? A reverse lunge or a side lunge, or we, we experiment with a different variation of a lower body exercise because we have to find out is, are you afraid of just training your lower body? Do you think that your lower back is just so weak and fragile due to a surgery, due to something else that you're just not capable of bending at the hips, right? So you have to keep this super rigid upright posture in order for you to be safe. It, is that your belief? If that is, then we have to break that down through movement and exercise and to build strength on that and to build confidence around that. So if the body weight squat is causing an issue, you have to find the next variation of a lower body squat. And which kind of brings me on this tangent of some people are so afraid to take out exercise. Then if you're a more of a conditioned exerciser, if you've been working out for a very long time, um, then you'll take things like deadlifting. Things like if you do CrossFit stuff, a lot of the Olympic lifts, or if you do barbell squatting, right? And you're so used to barbell squatting and barbell deadlifting and doing heavy, heavy weight. But then when you have chronic low back pain, persistent back pain, you've got to navigate those exercises. And that might mean pulling them out completely, right? And finding other ways to challenge the lower body so you don't lose your gains, you don't lose your strength. But you can keep that strength going, but also continue to build and work on confidence in the body, confidence in the fact that you just because you have chronic low back pain or persistent back pain, that you can still overcome it, still build strength despite it. So what is your threshold? What exercises are you doing right now that are causing you pain? You've got to pull yourself back from those and find other variations of that specific exercise to plug yourself back in and then test, see if it's if it's causing you the same symptoms. There's been numerous times where I've started a workout and I started to do um, like push-ups or planks for my first core exercise. Again, I break down how I structure my exercises in the link in the comment section. So if you haven't gotten that, get that. Um, but I break, like let's say I start with a, a, a plank and I'm feeling this really weird catching sensation. In my mind, I'm like, oh, well, you know, I, I ruptured my disc, so it could be my disc shifting around and sliding around maybe, or my, I'm not, not my disc, my vertebrae, my vertebrae sliding. I could be telling myself all these lies and fearful things, or I can say, you know what, just planks just aren't it today. Planks just aren't it today. Let's go to side planks. Is it not it? Okay, let's go to stir the pots. Can I do stir the pots? Can I bend my knee and do stir the pots? 
Yes, I had zero symptoms. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit stir the pots harder that day. I'm going to really emphasize I have found a core development, core training that is neutral spine that's safe for chronic low back pain, safe for post-surgery, and I'm going to do this specific exercise, and then I'm going to start from there, right? Um, so yeah, so like it, you, you got to find your entry point, and I've, I've uh, mentioned Relief Academy and how Relief Academy is not just a workout program where like you jump in, you start exercising, right? If you want a workout program, a back pain friendly strength training program, that's why I have this smart strength membership that gives you back pain friendly dumbbell, barbell, body weight, band. Um, they basically use those four things, dumbbell, body weight, barbell, and band. Um, I cycle those things as if you have a basic home gym, um, but you can easily modify any kind of barbell exercise anyways. But um, that gives you specific workouts where you just can build strength safely and confidently knowing that what you're following is actually from someone who suffered from back pain, chronic back pain and overcame it. Relief Academy is different. Relief Academy pulls all those things back and starts from fundamental levels of movement. You know, learning how to use movement, you, learning how to um, change the mindset around pain, understanding your pain from a different perspective and learning how to marry while you're in the gym, while you're exercising and finding those specific thresholds for you to jump in and start using them for exercise and how to marry that with, OK, I'm experiencing pain. What should I do? Right. I'm in the gym. I'm just warming up and I'm having pain. What should I do? Relief Academy breaks that down and builds more confidence around those things. So that's the difference. So talked about playing with different thresholds, finding different specific exercises that you can kind of jump into. Again, if you've got, I know I have a few questions in here. If you have questions you want to throw into the box um, after this, I'm almost done. I'm going to try to keep it shorter than the last one that went like 50 minutes, which is awesome because we all got to hang out and ask questions for that. So if you have questions, leave it in the comment section. We'll jump on. We'll do some Q&As. If that kind of leans on some tangents, I'm totally fine. But I want to hear if you have any feedback, leave it there, and we can kind of chat it up. Um, so now we've, we've kind of talked about the fear on exercise. We've talked about um, when things don't really go as planned, and you think you're going to have a certain experience in the gym, and you don't, and it goes south. Now let's talk about the persistence of back pain, right? If you're doing all the things, if you've jumped into my workshop and you're following that to, to the T and now you're dealing with back pain regardless, right? You're in the, you're in the gym working out, no matter what exercise you do, what modifications you do, you're experiencing chronic back pain. And, and this, this is where there's a, there's a fork in the road, right? There's people who can just start training smarter, can change habits, and that is enough to go off on a progressive, not linear, but a progressive path to start seeing relief over time, right? Um, then there's the other path where it's more persistent regardless. And that kind of goes back to what I was just talking about, how you have to approach it differently, right? Sometimes you have to pull back everything. If you're trying to follow a very specific workout and you've been following it for a few months and regardless of the change you do, you're not seeing the the results that you want or your pain hasn't really changed much or it's becoming more persistent, more elevated, then that's where you have to address more than just weight training. You have to address more than just building strength. Not that that's not what you need, but there's more elements to persistent low back pain, right? There's a strength element. There's a movement element. There's awareness and habits element. And there's a mental element. Those four elements are the pillars of persistent, overcoming persistent low back pain. These four elements are literally what I used to go from a ruptured L5S1 disc and degenerative disc above that site, chronic pain, numbness in my legs, sciatica, all the things, um, QL tightness, floating pain, stiffness, tightness all over my body. Going from that to six plus years later, sitting here today without chronic back pain, not having anything done to my low back, never actually filling prescription medication for pain. I didn't, I just didn't do it. Right. And I did a lot of stupid stuff over the time. And I was just applying exercise very bluntly to my relief strategy. I would just work out more. 
I wasn't strong enough. I, I would train harder. Like I was, that's what I was doing and it wasn't going anywhere. So I had to back out. And this is where I started to navigate those four elements. Strength, you already kind of have that um, movement. That's a combination of learning how to move, hip hinging, learning how to do things with proper form, doing things with the right muscle activation, right? A lot of people just kind of go through the motions. Not everybody is really anal about how they move and how they navigate exercise and their daily habits. So approaching those things with more intent, with more just focus, that's a big difference. And knowing what to do and how to do it is really important. So strength, movement, um, um, what was the other one? I know mindset was one, but I didn't want to talk about mindset quite yet. Um, awareness. So you have awareness of just your body and space. And I don't like to say posture because we think, and I've got something coming out in the weeks to come on posture and how we think perfect posture is the, is the, um, is the, or not having perfect posture is the root of low back pain, but that's not the case. You don't have to have perfect posture. So you have to bring awareness to your habits, awareness to, to what you're thinking, what you're saying, how you're moving, how you're building strength, more awareness around that. And then mindset. And this is probably one of the most impactful, game-changing pillars or elements to persistent low back pain. And anybody who's gone through or is going through Relief Academy, that's a constant conversation and comment that I see on the chats in that, in that course is how life-changing the mindset and understanding pain concept in Relief Academy is so powerful because it's, it's reframing your entire thought process around pain and what you believe to be true, what isn't true when it comes to persistent low back pain, when it comes to damage to your spine or post-surgery, all those things, it, it breaks down what's true and what's false and, and the myths around what doctors have told you, what your MRIs have told you, what chiropractors or physical therapists or physiotherapists, no matter what opinion you've been given by these medical professionals that we trust, there's a lot of not just myths and a lot of um, just wrong information being told that is building fear and creating anxiety and worry around the way we live and the way we experience pain. And it's literally holding people back from overcoming pain. You shouldn't have pain for 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. And if you are having pain for that long, like I did, I'm doing something wrong. Like you're doing something wrong, right? If you were to break your arm right now, if I would, could just, just snap this arm right, right in half, if I snapped it in half, I had to go to the doctor. I'd get it. They, those, those awesome doctors would come in. They'd splint it, cast it put the bone back together. But guess what? In a few months, however long it takes for bones to heal, my bone's going to heal and my arm's not going to hurt anymore. Yes, it would hurt when I first did it. Absolutely. That pain's not in my head, nor is your back pain in your head, but it's the belief around that our bodies are damaged. And whether I've had a fusion, whether I've had any kind of spinal surgery, or if I have any kind of diagnosis due to MRIs that I've been taking on my body, I believe a certain thing Therefore, I take that with me and I build my relief based off of the fact that I have damage. And despite my damage, I'm going to try my best, but my damage always comes up. And, and that is what holds people back. So the, the mindset factor of Relief Academy and, and that just in general, if you can just find and learn, educate yourself around understanding pain and the truth about pain. Um, it'll change your life. It'll literally change your life. And you have to do it a certain way. You have to unpack it. It's not just like listening to a podcast or reading a book on pain science. It, it's, it's not about that. You have to break it down and be practical with it and learn how to apply it and then revisit it as you unpack exercise because you have to apply them while you're going through movements. So that's it. I want to cover the four pillars. I want to kind of break down just some just some myths about exercise, exercise or navigating exercise or approaching exercise with low back pain um, because you can't treat back pain like you treat a headache, right? Nothing you're going to do is going to work on the pain the way a Tylenol or aspirin works on headache. I always use that analogy is when I have a headache, I know that I can go in there and I can just pop two Tylenol or pop two aspirin and my Headache is going to go away eventually, 30 minutes or whatever, however long it takes me that 
medication to get in my bloodstream, my headache's going to be gone. That's not how it works with back pain. So you have to have the knowledge and the understanding of taking exercise, taking movement, taking awareness, taking pain science and understanding the psychology of pain and then marrying them all together and navigating exercise and movement with pain while you're experiencing pain. Is it good pain? Is it bad pain? Is it pain that I can push through or do I have to pull back on this? And that's kind of what I wanted to unpack with you today with this video is just some tips you can do, practical things you can strategize and use and navigate um, during your own workout. So I hope that was helpful. If it, you know, if you have a comment, again, leave it in the comment section here. I'm going to jump in. I got some questions from, uh, man, I, don't, I hope I don't, your last name is Bossy Sanjoli. Is that how you say it? I don't want to mess up your name. My name, William Richards. I've been called Richard my whole life. My name is William, not William. It's William Richards, not Richard Williams. So people mess my name up my whole life. So, um, so I start working out with pain, but after two, two days, I give up due to this pain. Uh, I'm going to read through a few of these because it's from the same person. Um, yeah, these are great ones. This is legs in pain. Please make some videos on how to control pain in legs. Yeah, we get some kids going throughout the workout to fight some pain. All right. So I start out with pain, but after two or three days, I give up due to this pain. So I would break down what your workout is looking like. What are you doing in your workout? What exercises are you doing? You cannot just go into the gym and just do any old exercise. You can't go in there and do what other people are doing. You can't jump on the Smith machine and start doing squats. You can't do take dumbbells and start raising them out like this because this, having weight out here, can trigger a spasm can trigger low back pain. And I know that because I dealt with it for so long, right? So there's a right and a wrong way. And there's specific exercises that chronic low back pain or persistent back pain people need to stay away from and build up to, right? So if you are exercising or starting to work out with pain, and then after two, three days, um, you stop because the pain is increasing. If it's increasing, odds are what you're doing um, just isn't where you should be at. You've got to change what you're doing, choose different exercises, find a simpler version of your workout. Don't work out as long, take out some of the exercises, um, do more of something and less of another. Like you have to navigate it specifically for you, but it's what you're doing that's probably making things worse. So that's what I would approach first is exactly what your workout looks like and then going from there. Um, Diagnosed with grade one, but I have severe legs and pain. Please make some videos on how to control pain in legs. So when it comes to this, it depending on how severe your situation is, and I think I, I'm familiar with, with who you are because we've been chatting through email and stuff like that. Um, when you're talking about what you have, A, you have to be cleared to exercise. Once you've been cleared to exercise by your doctor, um, then we can kind of start talking about what you can and cannot do. Um, depending on the severity of your situation, we'll kind of hold you back from certain things. But there isn't an exercise that's going to fix the pain in your legs, right? It's not exercise and back pain and, and overcoming chronic pain um, in the body is not about doing an exercise or a stretch or a movement or um, anything like that, that's going to take it away. That's what the medical industry has done to us because we think damage, we think pain, something is wrong. We have to get it fixed. So we go see a professional. The professionals are doctors, surgeons, blah, blah, blah. They say that, okay, you've got this issue. This is your problem. We have to cut it, you know, seize it or freeze it or whatever we have to do to it, fuse it, and then it'll get fixed. So that's what we're, we go into the medical industry looking for is a solution. So the solution to pain in the legs, pain anywhere, is not going to be done or through a specific exercise, right? So that can either stress you out because you're like, oh, crap, well, then now what do I do? Or it can bring you relief because you're going to continue to search what's the best exercise for spondies? What's the best exercise for fusions? What's the best? And you're not going to find what you're looking for ever because either A, no one's talked about it because people who are dealing with it themselves haven't beat it. So they're not talking about how to cure it. Or you're going to get like WebMD or SpineHealth.com, those generic 
um, um, facility driven websites that give you very g generic blanket advice. That's what you're going to get. And they're not going to take you anywhere, which is why I started fitnessforbackpain.com because I'm trying to help you navigate the fact that it's not just about a specific exercise, but it's a lifestyle change, right? It's learning movement, learning awareness that's going to help you navigate and build resilience in the body and build strength in the body so that you can become more pain free and gain more control of your pain. So I know it's not the best answer, but it's not a specific exercise that's going to help you with that. Um, again, it's going to go back to navigating what you can and cannot do, finding those entry points of painful exercise and non-painful movements and exercise and spending time around the, the, the less painful exercises and building up resilience in the body from there. Okay. Um, what do you do when you have some discomfort throughout the workout? Um, I would really kind of focus more on how, again, going back to the structure of your workout, how are you starting your workout? Um, the, which you probably should have already gotten, but at that workshop that I linked to above, uh, at the very top of that comment box, um, that breaks down what your workout should look like. If you're, if you experience in and out of discomfort during your workout, again, it, it goes back to that, that same answer I had earlier to your question. Um, uh, just looking at what your program looks like. You know, you have to know when to stop. You have to know when to pull back um, your exercises and what you're doing. If you're doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting different results, it's not going to happen, right? It's You're not going to get it. So you have to find that's the cool thing about chronic back pain is you, if you can navigate good and bad exercises and painful and less painful, which most people can, if you can navigate those, you, it's safer to be on the least painful exercise and building up from there, right? But in order to build up from there, you have to build the mental fortitude and the mental structure and confidence and understand pain so that while you're progressing and as you're making things harder and you might be experiencing some pain, you're, you're learning about the pain science. You're learning about how the body responds to pain so that this pain here through exercise become less, becomes less fearful, becomes less um, aggressive, right? Or driven by worry and anxiety. There's, there's a big difference in that. And you have to navigate both of those as you're progressing. And again, I think I've already even mentioned to you about Relief Academy. Is That's what that does specifically. Um, I was a pain injection spine. Well, awesome. I'm glad it's kind of given you some hope. That's honestly, that's what I created this, this website for. I think four years ago, I started writing about just my journey and what I, what was I was seeing success with. And that was really, um, yeah, that's kind of how all this birth. So I, I appreciate this thousands of people, um, who are on the site and who read my stuff every week. So I'm, I, as long as you guys keep reading, I'm going to keep putting it out. So I appreciate you guys for, for just hanging out. Um, uh, 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 can we have session with you personally? Now I am in Florida. I have a studio at my house that I can train from. So if you're in Florida, that's a little bit different. I'm not sure where you're located. Um, you can leave, let me know where you're at. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching where in a sense of me and you are working online virtually through Skype or just through email or something like that, where we're designing programs for you specifically with what you have available at your house or at your, wherever you work out. Um, and we're, you kind of have that support where it's one-on-one -on -one support. Um, Relief Academy is a little bit of both it's due to the diversity and the complexity of chronic low back pain. It's better to have a foundation or a route that you take and then I come in at certain points and help you through that journey. Instead of me coming in, me and you, here's me and you, and we're starting from scratch, right? Because I like to go as fast as possible. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. I want to get to the good stuff. So if I can get you into a program and a platform that is teaching you all these different concepts that you need, and then you say, hey, like this part here, isn't working for me or I tried that exercise and it's hurtful. That's when I come in and say, Hey, 
Let's let's navigate this. That's the type of one-on-one coaching that I prefer to do. I like to give you a, a lot of information that you can work through on your own, but then I come in and butt in and start helping you break through these these boundaries and kind of giving you more insight. Um, so, and I do that through Relief Academy. That's really where everything's being funneled to is Relief Academy. Once you have lifetime access to that or year access to that, that's where I can jump in and really help you along the way. And th- that's also the really, I guess it depends on how you look at it, but that's the journey of persistent low back pain, right? It is not a four week thing. It's not a six week thing. And to work with me one-on-one in person is very expensive, right? So to say, it's like, it's like going to see a physical therapist, right? It, which is, which is, it blows my mind. Like you go see a physical therapist or you have surgery, you're in rehab and you've had this and that, and you're seeing your, your medical professional that you trust that your insurance is paid for. Well, in four to six weeks, as awesome as that person may have been, you're gone. They, they, they cut you off. No one's going to keep emailing you every day, helping you out, helping you build on your workout program. So you have your little notes of exercises that your PT gave you and you're doing these for the next four years and you never progress from there. That's, that's what's wrong with the medical industry, which is where I've plugged myself into as a strength coach. You get released from the wild, you get released into the wild from your doctor from your physical therapy or whatever you're doing. And you need that intentional strength training, intentional coaching to navigate life again, because you can't afford to keep seeing your PT. No one can afford that stuff. Believe, trust me, like no matter how much money you have, you're going to run out because it takes so long and they can't put a date on your recovery. They, they're not going to sit here and say, Oh, in six weeks, you should be good as new. They might tell you that, but it's not the fact because you may have good days, bad days. You might fall and hurt yourself. Then you got to navigate getting over getting over that. You may have a complication. Like There's so much stuff, which is why the medical industry is so frustrating when it comes to persistent low back pain because nobody can hang on to you long enough for you to see long-term results. So you get left on your own and then it's kind of like, well, what do I do now? And you have nothing to do. So you just keep kind of doing these random things. You keep injuring and hurting yourself and it's just a vicious cycle. So um, I mean, that's just a tangent. That's just a tangent. Um, you're welcome for answering that. Which program is best <clears throat> for beginners? Um, just joining, depending on what your goals are. Um, again, in my mind, the perfect program is Relief Academy because Relief Academy goes from beginner level stuff, beginner level of movement, beginner level of strength training, beginner level of mindset, understanding the pain science, understanding. Just all of the the biopsychosocial aspects of pain and over, and what it takes to overcome it. Because again, back pain is not just mechanical. It is not just make it, it's not about moving better. That's it. It's not about just building stronger hips. That's not just it. It's a combination. So for beginners, that's where I wish everybody would go first. Now people go to core essentials. Um, that was one of the first courses that I built that focuses entirely on core training. A lot of the fusions um, students that I have go to that and they love it because it goes from fundamental levels from pelvic floor strength all the way up to advanced core training, right? And it rebuilds and builds on this core coordination, not just strength, but endurance and coordination, right? But that's just core training. That, that's it. There's no mental aspect. There's no movement. There's no awareness. It's none of that. It's just core training. Um, And then a couple of years later, I came out with Relief Academy because people wanted the big picture. They wanted the entire platform with support. And that's where Relief came in. Um, And it's been awesome. People love Relief Academy. If you you can read the testimonials, jump in there and you'll see comments on videos and just we we navigate different things. It's it's just a really cool, a really cool opportunity for people who really want to take advantage of a different approach to beating chronic back pain other than surgery and rehab exercises. You want to beat it. That's where I suggest everybody goes is Relief Academy. Then if you just want to build strength, if you said, ah, I don't, I don't want to be this, I want to kind of navigate it. I just want to work out. I want, I, want, I want to know that what I'm doing in the gym is safe. I want to work out and build strength, build confidence in my body through strength training. Then the Smart Strength membership is where you want to go. Um, there's no mindset stuff. There's no movement changing or habit changing in that kind of sense. 
but it's strength training for back for sensitive low backs. You know, back pain friendly workouts. I follow these workouts to today, even if I don't have chronic back pain, I still do these workouts. And the people who are have back pain with me and I work with them, they do these workouts and we navigate those workouts with them. That is the smart strength membership. Um, Oh, you're in India. Awesome. That's cool, man. I'm, I'm, it's awesome that, that you are, are in in India. It's cool that we can kind of reach out. Um, but yeah, Relief Academy would be the best bet to get into. Um, once you're in there, we can kind of chat back and forth and um, we can really kind of break down more things, right? Because um, it's, it's not a quick fix. It's a long-term game. So you got to have information and kind of be willing to unpack it and see ups and downs and kind of navigate it a very specific way. I mean, and if you if you have that mindset, if you have that going into this, then you're going to do awesome. Um, is there any way to try Relief Academy before sending payment? What you can do, I mean, I can. I don't have like a like a free trial or a free run of anything. What I, all of my courses that I have have a 30 day risk free guarantee. Whether it's Core Essentials, whether it's Smart Strength Membership whether it's Relief Academy, everything has a 30 day guarantee where if you get into it and you're like, this dude's crazy. Like he says it has all this stuff, but you get into it and she's like pictures of his dogs and cats. Like if that's what happens, like I want you to have your money back. I, I, I don't want, I didn't do this to scam people. There's people, there's back pain. If you go on Facebook and look up back pain groups, everybody in those groups are just being spammed by so much junk. It's just junk. It's just garbage. It's posture braces, creams, inversion tables, like orthotics for flat feet. And I've got flat feet and I still don't have chronic back pain. So, and now it's a whole different tangent there, but there's so much junk. And because of there being so much junk and because of what I'm up against when it comes to the market or the industry, I'm a strength coach who has overcome chronic back pain, who uses these techniques. And what I've learned over the past 10 to 15 years to help people do this. So, and I've put it all inside of Relief Academy. So if you get into it and you're looking through the videos, looking through the modules and you're like, there's no way this is going to help me. There's, there's, there, there, there's just no way. Then let me know. Say, Hey, no, thanks. But no, thanks. This is just not going to work for me. And I'll just, you know, refund the money, every penny. There, there's no, Oh no, you didn't watch to, to video six. You have to, you have to complete all of these modules before you can get a refund or you have to like, you know, check in with me seven times, like none of that stuff. Like, I don't, I don't want to do that. Like I, I'm not connected to a doctor's office. I'm not a big wig medical industry. I just have a solution and a, and a, a, I meet a pro very specific problem with strength, with strength training and the techniques that I use. And I serve those people. And if it doesn't serve you, if it doesn't work for you, then I don't, I want you to go somewhere else. that's going to help you better, you know? Um, so I hope that answers your question. So treatment as in, I, I'm, I'm not a doctor, so I'm a, I'm a strength coach, right? I'm, I'm a, I'm a personal trainer. So my niche, my niche has been for years, low back pain. So people come with all different kinds of issues. I've had fusions. I've had people who've had specific surgeries, who have been diagnosed with slipped discs or spondylitis and stuff like that. So I've, I've had those people. I've uh, talked to those people. Um, how they respond to strength training, how they respond to things like Relief Academy is very different, right? Because again, it's not just, will these five exercises help me in this specific situation, right? It's, it's a process. So everyone goes through the same process, but everyone has a different experience with that process. And the purpose of having a coach or having someone who has been through pain and navigating chronic pain is being able to break through the, those those roadblocks or break, break through those issues that you might be having. Um, so again, it, it's not... I can kind of see that where that question is kind of going is, will this specific workout help with my specific situation? And the only way that you can answer that is by trying it out, is by doing it, right? The only way I could find out that I was able to do deadlifts again was by doing it in a very simple, basic way, right? And once I didn't have pain, I added a little bit more weight. And I didn't have pain. I, could, I felt stronger. 
I added more weight. And then I went from dumbbell deadlift to kettlebell deadlift to barbell deadlift. And I, that's how I progressed. So in order, and that's with anything, with, with, with chronic back pain. I know it's, it'd be so much easier, believe me, because I know when I was searching for myself, um, you know, how to overcome a ruptured disc pain, how to overcome a ruptured disc. Exercise is best for ruptured disc. Like, you know, what's the best way to exercise with degenerative discs? Like I was searching for that stuff and there is no workout specifically designed for that stuff. Working out in general builds resilience in the tissues, the joints, the muscles, which is what you need. You've got to build stability in the spine. You've got to build confidence in your body, in, in, in movement, overall strength. You can't do it fearfully. You got to do it confidently and work on both the mindset and the strength aspect. So unless you're doing those things, like no workout will work for you at all because you have to approach it that way. You That's the way you approach persistent low back pain is do all those things. And you won't know that it's going to help you until it helps you and you jump in and you, and you try it. Um, and I know this because I've spent thousands of dollars on treatments because I didn't know if they were going to work. I, I went, I mean, you go see a chiropractor, you go see a physical therapy. Is your workouts or is your adjustment going to help you? I don't know. You know, that's what the, I mean, they're going to tell you yes. But I remember when when I was trying to, to figure all, all my stuff out, um, for a while I thought my hip flexors, that, that was my issue. I had tight hip flexors. Um, so I bought hip flexor courses, right? Stretching for your hip flexors, stretching for your hips. And I was, I was pursuing that because I was told by a medical professional that my hips were tight and my hip flexors need to be stretched. And because my hip flexors were so tight that it was just kind of cramping up on my low back and causing all my tension. That's what I was told by someone I trusted. So I pursued that and I, that came up to a dead end, but I didn't know that that wasn't going to work until I went out and attempted it. But again, I'm getting at that time, I was just like everyone else. I'm getting advice from doctors. I'm getting advice from people who have never experienced low back pain for themselves. They have just been taught through textbook. They do some research articles that it's like 10, 15 years past due, like or not past due, but 10 or 15 years old, like research on treating back pain. Years and years and years. Their doctors are taught medication, surgery. That's what they're taught. They're not ta taught strength training. They're not taught the biopsychosocial model of pain. They're not taught. They're not taught those things. So they're not going to apply it to you. Um, so I know that's kind of a long-winded answer to that question. But um, what's so unique about your program is your ongoing coaching. It sounds great. Thank you. So if you watch, I'm not sure when you tuned in, Lisa. But if you watch back to the beginning of this video, now we're going 50 minutes, which is awesome. Um, and there's still people in here. So I appreciate you guys who are hanging into the end. Um, but if you go back, I, I break down, there's four different pillars to overcoming persistent back pain. There's the strength, which is like working out the smart strength membership or, or core essentials, like building strength in the body. Then there's movement. So the daily movements that you do, that the, the proper movements that you do, how carelessly do you bend or how carelessly do you move or this tuning specific movements like twisting and flexing and extending to your specific situation, right? Finding those things out. Um, so strength, movement, then awareness, bring awareness to the things like posture, not finding perfect posture because you don't need it. Promise you, you don't need perfect posture to be persistent chronic back pain, but you have to bring awareness to these things, awareness to how you move, awareness to, and actually in Relief Academy, I'm, I just started shooting an entire module. I'm adding to Leaf Academy, by the way. I just started shooting an, a whole module on posture. So once all those videos are done being shot, I'm going to upload it. And that just comes with the course. It's not going to be more expensive and I'm not going to raise the price of the course. I'm always just adding content to that course and building on different modules. We have a, po a, a posture module coming out. And then I'm going to start working on a sleep module where it breaks down the importance of sleep and the, and the connection of chronic persistent back pain or pain in general and sleep and how they're connected and how to overcome them. And it's, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Um, but strength, movement, awareness, and then mindset. So the uniqueness in Relief Academy, there's, I, if, if you were to break it down into two things, there's, there's strength and how there's just the body mechanically, right? All the things mechanical when it comes to the body. 
you have that factor, and then you have the mindset, you have pain science, you have the understanding pain, the, the psychology of pain and how our bodies respond to pain and the damage that we've experienced or the MRIs that we've been told or what we've been told due to the MRIs or the surgeries that we've had, fusionists, disectomies, all these things. There, there's these two things, right? You have to have both. You have to have both. So if you're out fixing your flat feet because you were told, like me, I was told that my flat feet jacks up my knees, my knees cave in, my hips are kind of turned out and and kind of jacked up. So that's causing tension in my lower back. And even if it was, I still have flat feet today and I don't have persistent chronic low back pain. So that the uniqueness is the mindset. The uniqueness is, is understanding pain and when you approach understanding pain to the, the mechanics, that's where the magic happens. Because as you're navigating exercise, as you're building strength, as you're working through how to hip hinge properly, and you're like, this is hurting. Well, if you didn't have the mindset part, if you weren't being taught how to pursue and to look at pain and the truth behind pain, then you'll you're stuck like there's nothing else to do if the hip hinge hurts it hurts like you can't fix it sorry like that's 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 what sucks about not having the right help because you're lost you're lonely in that on that space of trying to navigate your pain with the mindset approach or with having making sure you have that approach is when you're experiencing pain you're like you're also being taught this really cool information about pain science and understanding how our bodies respond to pain and how we should change the way we view that pain to help us progress and the step-by-step approach to do that. So that is like the uniqueness of it. Um, That's, that's it. And it's, there's so much content on the biopsychosocial model of pain um, that it's just, it's just, it's awesome. You you just got to check it out. And, and, And there's lots of resources and stuff like that that I actually share inside of Relief Academy along with videos and, and there's a lot to it. So um, where do I sign up for Relief Academy? If you go to, if you swipe up on the chats, there's um, one of the chats that I'd started or the comments I said, it says Re- Relief Academy. I actually have for students of my newsletter um, and anyone who gets on these lives, there is a 25% off um, that you can use. And through that link, if you make sure you read, you can read, it talks about everything. The, you can talk about everything. So read through it, make sure it's for you. Um, have any questions, let me know. But if you go to that link, there is a specific percent off discount that you can use. Um, that's for newsletter subscribers and people who get on these lives. So make sure you use that because that is for you. Um, and I'll put it down here. I'll update it right here real quick. Man, I really appreciate we're we're pretty much done. I, I really appreciate you guys coming in here. People are in and out. Um, I know I'm gonna get a lot more comments and stuff like that and engagement with the replay. Um, there you go, Lisa. I just added it again. So you should be able to click. Does it work? Does it work? Yep, it works. So there's that. Um you really seem to stress that it's very important to understand pain. If I was to buy one book about pain, which would you recommend to me that would be very helpful? Anders, great question. I'm looking at my bookshelf behind me. If it was one book. This one right here. Bam, David Hanscom, back in control. This is like a, and I say that because it kind of gives you some practical stuff that you can do. Um, this is a huge, it, it, it doesn't It doesn't break down like the different types of pain. Like you have like autonomic pain, you've got reactive pain. Like we have different, Due to our personalities and the way we view life, we respond to pain differently. So once you understand the types of pain that you experience, you're, it's kind of like a light bulb goes off and you're like, oh, I get it now. That makes total sense. So this does not go into that 100%. 
But this goes into a surgeon's perspective who, who specialized in um, the most severe chronic pain situations, who would operate on spines that were just the gnarliest. And he had back pain himself, and he writes about it, talks about it, gives some practical advice in here um, that, I mean, I still read to this because there's just so much good information. Um, I mean, I guess there's no pictures. I'm a picture kind of guy. So no pictures, but that would be it. That would be the one book that I suggest that you get. Um, any more questions? We are at an hour almost. This is awesome. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this. I, I want to do more lives, but I want to talk about something you guys want to hear about. The psychology of pain, all that stuff. Like it's 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 kind of boring, yet it's so powerful. So I don't want to keep talking about that. So if you guys want to talk about other things on future lives, I want to try to do this. Um, Anders, man, I, I, I appreciate you. That's, <laughs> that's why I try to be just to be honest and just to kind of share my experience and what's real and what's crap when it comes to the industry. Like that's, um, and I try to display that through the emails and the content because there's a lot of just junk. There's so much junk when it comes to persistent back pain and people, still deal with it man like 40 plus years of persistent low back pain and it's just crazy it's just crazy and it's just bad information so i, I appreciate you um i yeah i just i just appreciate you appreciate all the people who listen read watch comment engage love it um but that's it so that's 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 today's live i'm gonna try to do this next week if you have something if you're on my newsletter shoot me an email, say, Hey, like you mentioned this or Hey, like this kind of sparked my attention. Can you dive more into this? Like, um, and I'll do it. If it comes to core training, if it comes to training upper body, training lower body, we can do stretching. We can do mobility. We can do strength training specifically. There's all different kinds of topics we can talk about around back pain. So I wanted to serve you guys. I want you guys to be like, dude, this was for me specifically. And that's awesome. I don't want to talk about what I want to talk about. I want to talk about what you guys want to hear me talk about. Um, so I don't see any more questions popping in. Thanks so much, uh, Lisa Anderson, everyone who has um, – Senjoli. I hope I'm saying that right. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I appreciate you for tuning in. I don't think there's any more – Comments or questions? Um, that's it. Awesome. Have an awesome Friday. Appreciate you guys again. Um, yeah, lots of stuff coming next week.